Sorry, fans of Gerard Butler, but I think Lon Chaney Sr. will always be the best version of The Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom of the Opera is a silent film that came out in 1925. It was directed by Rupert Julian, apparently. And this film has an interesting history. Apparently it went through not one, but two complete reshoots because Rupert Julian and the studio heads and the star Lon Chaney Sr. just didn't get along. Apparently, to, according to what I've read from interviews, Lon Chaney Sr. and the director didn't get along so much that a lot of the cast and crew would have to go give Sr. his, his directions and Lon Chaney would just do whatever he wanted, which is fine with me because he's great in the film. He's fantastic. It's hard for me to talk about the rest of the cast and the crew, which are good, and they do the typical overacting and uh, play their roles very, very well, but Lon Chaney Sr. is creepy as hell. Like, I mean, the face is iconic, and his acting is, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost um, transcendent. I. It is clear that Lon Chaney Sr. was the first actor to really act through makeup. I mean, we wouldn't have great characters like Ron Perlman's Hellboy or Robert England as Freddy Krueger without Lon Chaney Sr. really setting the standards for characters like this. And what amazes me even more is that he did his own makeup. And this was famous for him for a lot of his films to do his own makeup. And it's one of the most iconic horror villains of all time and certainly his way the way that he acts through the makeup is astonishing i mean the reveal scene is iconic and and, and is startling i think if i wasn't uh if i didn't know what it looked like already that i, I would have been really surprised by how awesome the makeup looks and how great cheney is acting in that makeup And as I mentioned earlier, this film did go through two reshoots, and there's so many different versions of this film, too. I'm not entirely sure which version I own. I have it in a pack right here. And apparently, uh, from what I can gather, every version has footage from all three directors. Rupert Julian is credited as the main director, and then after he was fired, Ernest LeMay and Edward Sedwig did subsequent reshoots and apparently Sedwig was also fired after the second reshoots as well. It's just a mess but the film doesn't come off that way. It's not like Justice League where it feels like it's been directed by several people. No, Fan of the Opera, it, its story is still intact. It's still about an opera singer that has this obsessed fan who is this phantom that lives below the opera. It is still a creepy story and it, it it doesn't come off as um, it doesn't come off as three diff three or even four different visions. It comes off as just one complete film. And there's parts in the version that I watched. There's like five minute, five or ten minutes of it that's in color, and the color scenes are actually quite astonishing. My fav it it features one of my favorite parts in the movie. It's when the Phantom is standing on this gargoyle or this angel thing. And he's like just pointing down at uh, the actress that he's obsessed with because he's found out that she's going to stay with her boyfriend. And he's got like this giant red cape, this giant red costume. And his, fat, his mask is removed and it's just like his cape's kind of flowing in the wind. And it's, it's, a, it's a cool image for that era. It's, it's really incredible looking scene the opera house and seeing all these extras in there too it's it's cool what to see what they were able to do and a lot of this really does hold up and the the climax is it's it's very i'm curious to know if this is the first mob scene in a horror movie because mob scenes became very very popular in universal horror especially with films like frankenstein where there's this big mob of townspeople chasing down the monster Phantom of the Opera, of course, 
has a scene just like that near the ending. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's, it's entertaining as hell. And I mean, it's cliche, but it might have been the film to start the cliche. If I'm going to recommend a silent film, Phantom of the Opera is one of those ones that I would recommend as a starting point. The music that came with my version isn't anything to write home about. It does fine. I think this movie would be better with a live uh, with a live orchestra for sure. Maybe there are better soundtracks for it out there on like the Blu-ray version. It's an important piece of film history and one of my favorite silent films. So Phantom of the Opera, the 1925 version, depending on which version you have seen, apparently there's quite a few of them that have been edited together. Which one is your favorite? What's your favorite actor to portray the, the iconic Phantom of the Opera? Mine is personally Lon Chaney Sr. Robert England is a close second. Comment below, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.